Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here today and to share part of my research and my study with you all. Um, my presentation today continues and completes the work that I performed and presented together with Professor Peter Manuel in our first Fandanguero Congress. Closer? Wait. <laughs> uh, in, yeah, maybe like this. Okay. Um, so this conference uh, focuses mainly in Malagueñas and Zapateados, and once again, I insist in talking about Rondeñas. <laughs> but Rondeñas and Malagueñas are sibling genres and sibling palos. Uh, this case study and its methodology not only may be in line with other works focused on Malagueñas, but also may inspire new researching. So our paper in 2015 shed new light on the evolution of flamenco guitar playing from the analysis of the rondeña performed by the vernacular uh, granadino guitarist Francis Francisco Rodriguez Murciano, El Murciano. Uh, in that work, uh, we presented two previously and examined variant transcriptions of Francisco Rodriguez Murciano's rondeña. The first one, here you can see it, uh, found in the personal music musical library of Princess Isabel de Bourbon, who is the central figure of my PhD. And the second one, uh, located in a book of 1851 entitled Letters and Documents of Glinka, which contains a photographic reproduction of a transcription of Murciano's Rondeña that the Russian composer noted in 1845 during his stay in Granada. Through the study of these two new transcriptions, we were <coughs> able to establish, among other things, that sound guitar techniques and flamenco forms were able to establish, among, uh, sorry, wh um, whose development had been circumscribed to the cycles of the classical guitarists of the late, of the late 19th century, already existed in the repertoire of flamenco guitar, at least from the first half of the 19th century, and among vernacular and folkloric guitarists as Murciano himself. So after this first contribution, I have been able to locate new variations of Murciano's rondeña, which have allowed me to trace its influence in other later compositions for guitar inscribed in the field of classical music, and therefore to glimpse the process of restoration of the 19th century rondeña and its own musical diaspora from the traditional music repertoire to the classical music one. So this musical diaspora happened mainly through two courses. The restored musical memory of high-row Andalusian musicians, such as the classical guitarist Julian Arcas, and the proliferation of handwritten musical copies of authentic folkloric documents, uh, which permitted its analysis and musical re-elaboration by other well-educated Andalusian uh, composers, musicians, such as Angel Barrios and Manuel de Falla. Uh, these two processes helped to restore the 19th century Rondeña sonority and specificity characterized by el toque por arriba tonality uh, based on E Furia major in three quarter meter, a basic, uh, basic filler riff of bass thumb, E major, B major, E minor, E, B, e major, B major, E minor patterns with E major arpeggios, other bourdon type bass thumb melodies decorated by constant E major and E dominant seventh arpeggios, and interjected passages of picado mixed with legado effects, effect executed by left hand uh, hammering on and pulling off. So regarding the first process of restoration of the musical memory of the 19th century rondeña, whose earliest antecedent is the one by Murciano, the earliest, the, the earliest that, uh, that we know so far, uh, I must start speaking of the rondeña para guitarra sola, rondeña for solo guitar by the classical uh, guitarist Julian Arcas. And in the presentation of our work, scholars had focused on the conspicuous similarities between Murciano's rondeña and this piece. Certainly, both rondeñas reveal many features in common with each other and also with modern style of playing malagueña. I will briefly pause now to play several uh, sections of both rondeñas, which are cert certainly very, very illuminating of what I'm saying. Um, these are passages, falsetas, that sound the same in one and, and another rondeña. And also, it will give you an idea of what's, how the 19th century rondeña sounds. I'm going to start with the rondeña by Murciano, and I'm going to alternate its uh, falsetas with the ones by, by Arcas. Go with it. 
the second one. Oops. From its analytical and comparative study and its contextualization, we can assume that Arcas reproduced the sonority of the 19th century Rondeña in his piece. It is very probable that the tradition of the 19th century Rondeña was one of the most recognized and restored of the Andalusian repertoire. There is no evidence that Arcas knew Murciano in person, or if he obtained a musical copy of any of the variation of his Rondeña. I still need to check uh, his um, personal library, but other researchers have shared with me that they have not found any copy of Murciano's Rondeña among his documents, personal documents. But we can consider that there was, at least in the area of Eastern Andalusia, and Almeria and Granada are uh, adjacent provinces, uh, a collective musical memory of the Rondeña. Uh, its falsetas and its sonority. We can therefore assure that Julian Arcas knew the tradition of the 19th century rondeña for guitar, which he restored and reworked in his rondeña para guitarra sola. This hypothesis is backed by the press advertisements of the time. In September of 1842, for example, a Madrid newspaper featured an ad for guitar lessons offered by a young dis disciple of Murciano, and now I quote, author of the genuine rondeñas granadinas, Granada style rondeña, uh, celebrated for their variaciones and never heard in the court. And later in 1859, Juan Jose Perez placed a similar note in a Seville newspaper offering guitar lessons which could include Murcianos Malagueña, presumably referring to his rondeña. The 19th century rondeña was part of the musical memory of the Andalusian guitarists of the time, as well as the musical memory of Arcas. And this one restored, in its compositions, um, restored it in its compositions of Andalusian airs. So all this allows, in my opinion, to define the figure of Julian Arcas, not as the father of flamenco guitar, as many have said, but as a nationalist composer who, like other musicians of the sp first Spanish music uh, musical nationalism, used the authentic folkloric document, in this case, Murciano's Rondeña, as a base inspiration for his own comp compositions, more refined, elaborate, and complex. So as we see flamenco musical repertoire, whose restored behaviors were, uh, were fort rooted in caves, in patios, in the humblest houses, in barber shops, um, in the tablaos of many cafe conciertos, underwent an, uh, underwent an expansive process with the arrival of musical nationalism in Spain, the exaltation of popular music, and the need to crystallize a sound identity of the Spanish. Continuing with the restoration of the 19th century rondeña for solo guitar playing, the truth is that at the end of the 19th century and the first years of the 20th, we lose its trace in documentary terms, as we cannot find source, sources after the 1870s. It is not possible to know if flamenco guitarists continue playing this 19th century rondeña. And the fact is that it wouldn't be until 1930 when the rondeña for solo guitar playing reappears in the flamenco repertoire with the composition by Ram, um, uh, Ramon Montoya, whose rondeña has very little to do uh, with the ones by Murciano and Arcas. 
However, as I pointed out at the beginning of my presentation, the finding of new transcriptions of different versions of Murciano's Rondeña allows us to establish how the musical memory of the 19th century Rondeña were rest were, was restored <coughs> in compositions belonging fully to the 20th century music repertoire, thanks mostly to the proliferation of uh, the musical copies of the vari variations of Murciano's Rondeña. At the time, uh, I guess that in the absence of photocopiers, uh, handwritten musical uh, copies were circulated among musicians who uh, sought to, to inspiration in traditional music, like Manuel de Falla. So 19th century Rondeña played a fundamental role and a great impact in the work of Falla, fascinated by the guitarist language in its flamenco manifestations and its relaboration and use in classical music. My research establishes that Falla recreated the technique and idiomatic sonority of the 19th century Rondeña for guitar in a great number of his compositions from diverse sources, among them and fundamentally from both Rondeñas by El Murciano and Arcas. So Manuel de Falla conserved among his musical documents the Rondeña para guitarra sola by Arcas, a score he had acquired in his Parisian period between 1904 and 19, uh, 1907, sorry, and 1914. But also he kept his mo um, among his most prized musical documents up to four different handwritten transcriptions of Murciano's Rondeña indicating that this was a work of great interest to him, very influential in his composition. Uh, some researchers said that the only rondeña that uh, Manuel de Falla conserved in his personal archive was the one by Arcas. But um, I, had, uh, I was very lucky, I went to, uh, like a few months ago to Granada and I could find uh, new rondeñas uh, by El Murciano. So we see three of them in the images. Uh, the first one on the left here, uh, this is the same transcription of the Rondeña de Granada, the, the same one that is preserved in the Princess Isabel Personal Library, um, and the one that I unearthed in 2015, which contains uh, notes on the techniques of flamenco guitar, such as uh, Rasgueo o Punteo, by Manuel de Falla. And two new transcriptions, this one that, this one that you see here on the right, um, unknown so far, so this is new, under the title Variaciones de Rondeñas Compuestas por Don Francisco Rodríguez Murciano. Rondeña Variations Composed by Don Francisco Rodríguez Murciano, which I found some months ago, uh, as I already said. It was probably also a musician from Granada, Angel Barrios, a friend of Falla, who provided him with all these transcriptions right after he settled in Granada. Angel Barrios' father, uh, the guitarist Antonio Barrios, personally knew Murciano's son Malipieri, who was his guitar teacher. And this is the connection between Murciano and Falla. So here in this picture that I found in, in Angel Barrios' um, uh, archive, uh, we can see Malipieri, who is Murciano's son, and who was the one who transcribed all his father's variations of Rondeña. And here holding a guitar with the mustache is Antonio Barrios, who was the owner of a tavern in, the, in La Alhambra. It was in the same area of La Alhambra, up in the city. And he was his disciple. And here this uh, young man holding a violin is Angel Barrios, uh, who is the musician who uh, met uh, Manuel de Falla in Paris, and who helped him to settle in Granada in 1907. So this is the connection between Malipieri Murciano and Manuel de Falla. In fact, Angel Barrio himself restored part of the 19th century Rondeña in his piece for solo guitar, El Pregón de las Flores, where he reproduces its idiomatic elements. But I rather prefer to dedicate the last minutes of my talk to the restoration of the 19th century Rondeña for guitar tradition by Falla. So my research suggests that Falla used the guitar resources of the 19th century Rondeña in his composition Le Tombeau de Claude Debussy. His only solo guitar were composed in 1920, dedicated to the memory of the French composer who died in 1918. In this piece, he mainly used musical motifs of La Soirée d'en Granada uh, by Debussy. This work, which was one of his earliest compositions in Granada, has been the object of many of some studies that have recognized in it very explicit elements of flamenco, although none of them has linked it directly with the 19th century Rondeña. So a close look at this work allows us to record recognizable and explicit elements of it, 
as if I intentionally had included an honorable musical wink to the city of Granada, including musical material of the Rondeña by Murciano, with this guitarist used to perform in the Albaicín, this white neighborhood facing La Alhambra. <laughs> so I am going to concre concrete now the explicit, this explicit element. Uh, Le Tombo de Claude Debussy has a ternary musical form, ABA. Often, uh, this work has been associated with some tonal harmonic ambiguity by the alternate use of F and F sharp, C and C sharp, or B flat uh, notes. And like Murciano and Arcas Rondeñas, the composition of Falla, of Falla revolves around a modal center, E Firian. On the one hand, the main theme set out in the first two bars always ends up with a, free, a brief pattern in the style of the harmonic pattern of two arpeggio bars in Murciano's Rondeña. This one, the E major, B major, E minor, E major, B major, E minor pattern, um, resulting a constant in the, in the bordon. And in other words, in part A, Falla uses the main theme, combining it with different melodic materials extracti ext extracted sorry, from La Soledad Granada, always with a recurring rhythm and bounded, bounded by the arpeggiated cinquillo, as in Murciano's Rondeña, the arpeggiated pattern limits the different falsetas. We can see this pattern in La Soirée de Granada here. I cycle it so that you can see. Um, in the central part, B, or development, high point of the score, Manuel de Falla explicitly uses elements of the 19th century Rondeña which can be auditively recognized. From its analysis, we identify the arpeggiated treatment of chords in E major with melody in the bordon, <laughs> followed by an arpeggiated cinquillo that introduces a passage of a scale transition for the left hand, similar to the passage for the left hand in Murciano's Rondeña de Granada, as you can see in examples 1A and 1B. And this passage in Falla's uh, piece is followed by four bars with arpeggios in E major and melody in the, on the, in the, bordon, in the bordon, like in Murciano's Rondeña. The central part, B, of Le Tombeau de Claude Debussy ends up with two bars almost identical to bars 111 and 112 and bars 141, 142 of Murciano's Rondeña de Granada, as you can see in examples 2A and 2B. Using a metaphorical image, we could say that Falla placed the essence of the 19th century Rondeña right in the heart of Le Tombeau. Um, let's listen to this central part of part B of Le Tombeau de Claude Debussy. Let's see if you can recognize some of the 19th century Rondeña. Still part A. Return slowly to part A again to Les Soirées de uh, Dangrana de, de Claude de Vici. And now it's already part A. Oops. <laughs> so some authors maintain that the origin of the toque de Rodneña does not depend so directly on what El Murciano did in the first half of the 19th century and later Julian Arcas in 1860, but indeed in the 20th century creation by, by Ramon Montoya. As a conclusion, my study argues that the origin of the toque solo de Rodneña goes back at least to the first half of the 19th century and throughout that century continued to grow and consolidate as the solo guitar toque par excellence among flamenco guitarists. Uh, this tradition of the 19th century Rondeña and its guitar language influenced, in addition, the compositions of many cultivated composers of the 20th century, among others Manuel de Falla. Le Tombeau de Claude Debussy is the last piece of a sort of relaboración en cascada. Cascade process? Can you understand that? Relaboración en cascada? Cascading process? Okay. That began 
let's try to explain it. That began with the popular rondeña of guitarist Rodri Rodriguez de Murciano, continued with the restoration of rondeña for solo guitar by classical guitarist Julian Arcas, and ended with the reworking of Falla, of the most identifi identifiable musical material, uh, with the essence of the fu fundamental elements, as, he, as Falla used to say, of the 19th century rondeña. And this entire phenomenon could happen thanks to the restored musical memory of the Andalusian guitarist and the proliferation of the handwritten musical copies that spread out in time and space uh, the musical, this, this musical tradition. Thank you. Gracias. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And what I don't hear is the copla, which is the major key portion. And there's a follow on uh, Rondinia that, that lots of people have sung. And, and I believe that there's pretty uh, long historical record of that going down back to the 19th century, um, or at least to the early 20th century, which has this alternation between the major key and then resolving in, into the Julian de Pim Pim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the all the variations that I found um, have the copla. Sometimes it intercalate between the the falsetas, and the one that I f I, I found in the Princess Isabel um, personal library, the copla is completely apart at the end after a double double bar, but still it's there. So. Yeah, you you can you can follow the. I mean, there is like a change in the um, status of the copla um, with arcas uh, because these are not m anymore um, um, coplas to be sung, but instrumental coplas. You cannot uh, sing on them, and after that, where we we have the rondeña by uh, Montoya, who doesn't have any copla at all. Yeah. Yes, it's the same. It follows the same structure, harmonic structure, the same one as the fandangos. Yeah. Yeah. I, please. I, I was intrigued, of course, also how Faya comes home via the French composer de Bussy, who had so little physical contact with Spain, but of course the spiritual influence. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be great <laughs> to find that. But I, the thing is that I, I really think that Falla, well, it, it could have happened through Angel Barrios, who was in Paris, but I have not studied his, um, his career, though it's very interesting. There are some researchers who have done so in Granada. Um, I was going to say a name. I, I will remind it later. Um, but the, th the, the thing is that Falla, I think he knew this tradition, the 19th century Rondeña tradition, after arriving in Granada, after his Parisian state or uh, per um, period. So uh, I don't know if they were exposed to, to it. But Angel Barrios used to play in the trio, it was called Trio Albeniz, and they used to performance, to perform, sorry, uh, Albeniz uh, plays and and of course, he had knew had known uh, himself uh, Murciano. So maybe somewhere in Paris, someone heard Murciano's rondeña. But I don't have any recall about that. Yeah. Well, the most famous rondeña concert, rondeña classical piece based on a rondeña, is is clearly Alvenita's rondeña from the Iberia, Iberia. collection. Mm -hmm. And I'm so. called Rondinha, but most people today are used to the Montoya version, won't recognize this as a Rondinha. But this is, in fact, was typical. The 19th century Rondinha was very similar to the Malaguena, and had a more regular meter and predictable chord progressions and so on. So I'm very grateful. This is a fascinating development. That the problem is that the, 
Occasionally, it doesn't seem to be many, uh, much of a difference between a Rondanian or Malaganian, maybe even the older Granina. Yeah. So, mm, how would you articulate those? <laughs> so it's I'm trying like to restore the evolution of Rondania. I'm still on the process, but so far, what I can say is that maybe what Malaganya is for, I, I don't know how to express it in English, I think. El, what Malaganya is for, for um, I mean, what is El Cante from Malaganya is like the guitar for Rondenia. So oh. maybe there is this difference, yeah, because they the are the basically, beat. maybe, maybe. One emphasizes voice, yeah. emphasizes yeah. the guitar. Basically. Well, yeah, maybe when the singer was the protagonist, then they decide to perform the Malaganya, and when the guitarist was the protagonist, then it was the, the Rondenia. Uh, because the, the cante in Rondeña is very like right. rhythmic, light, m much more. Secondary. Yeah. So you know how it is Rondeña, right? Uh -huh, yeah. And Though I've never studied it. When you think, do you think Rondeña? Uh, I need to li to hear more that piece to make right. connections. But yeah, I hear. Of course, I I hear more 19th century Rondeña than the right. uh, uh, Montoya's one. Yeah. So yeah, very good point. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking about connection, uh, does this 19th century Rondenia have something to do with the Soleá also? Because I can't yeah. hear like yeah, in the our Soleá. Uh, in the first Fandanguero Congress, uh, Guillermo, <coughs> Guillermo Castro uh, said, uh, said exactly the same comment. Like, uh, what I'm hearing is a Soleá here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we still need like to do a great, a, a huge work to classify and to see the evolution of different palos and its connections among them. So, it was called Rondenia at that time, it became later on Soleá. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. So you, yeah. So you are the second person to say that, yeah. <laughs> Let's continue <laughs> listening and classifying. Let's see. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Gracias.